How's it going, guys? My name's Tyler. I go by Zany Online, and I make Linux videos, Unix videos. I've d dabbled around with OpenBSD and, you know, just all the things nerdy and computer-like. And in this little video, I kind of just wanted to talk about why I'm probably going to be sticking with Debian. And this is going to be a very casual video. Hopefully, you'll find this enjoyable. Um, it's just going to be me talking, so you know, take that with whatever you will. But I've been going back and forth between OpenBSD and Linux here recently, and I think I'm going to be staying on Debian for now. I mainly am going with Debian just because of the stability of it, and I know shit's not going to change, and it's just going to work the way it is now and also Debian kind of makes things really easy remarkably simple so if I run a NeoFetch here you'll actually see um, for one I'm using fish I did a video and it should have been yesterday's video so I'll try and throw a card up to that one just in case you didn't see it and you want to check it out uh, it was actually just me uh, it was a, a recording on Discord of me and a few friends while I checked out Fish for the first time. So hopefully you'll enjoy that. But yeah, I'm using Fish and I actually really enjoy it as a shell. You can see the default shell is still Bash, obviously. I'm keeping that as the system default. Because um, if you don't know, Fish is a shell, the prompt and everything. I don't know that we'll dive into that if you don't know what a shell is i definitely recommend looking into it um especially if you're new to linux you definitely want to know you know the difference between a shell and your terminal and stuff like that but fish is really nice it's very feature rich i i, I really do enjoy using it as the term as the shell that i interact with but if you'll notice the kernel here in neofetch it's a weird one. It's 5.16.bpo. That's for the backports, which is something, it's a repository that you can add. Um, if you do your uh, vim into your Etsy apt, uh, apt sources.list file, I actually added it down here. It's the last line here. Um, if we highlight this whole thing, the bullseye backports main here, uh, just add that line and then do an update. And so, you know, I do as apt update or sudo if you're using sudo. And then you'll have the back ports, you know, just repository in here. And I was able to just update the kernel using back ports. Um, it also updated a few other things like Vulkan and stuff like that, which is great. You know, I, I'm using a 5000 series. Um, APU, so getting the more up-to-date kernel, more up-to-date Falcon packages and everything is probably not a bad thing. So yeah, that was remarkably simple and just easy to do, which I like. I even made it more complicated by not just looking up the D Debian like uh, website, because they actually have um, where is it? Build a Debian kernel package. And so this right here tells you like it's uh, you just sudo apt install all of these packages here. And you might also want to get rsync too. Um, just something I found you might also want. It, it's not necessarily it's not necessarily necessary, but I'd go ahead and get it anyway. Just go ahead and add rsync to the last to the end of that if you don't already have it installed. And then, yeah, it's remarkably simple. You could do it manually this way or just do it the backports way, which I found to be just much easier just all around. I ended up getting a broken kernel doing it this way, but I don't really know that it was this fault because I did... a just try to do it a regular custom kernel way, like with make menu config. And so I probably fucked it up there for being honest, but nevertheless was super simple uh, to get a kernel, you know, 
an, an, a more upstate kernel here on Debian, but I just, I overall just really enjoy Debian um, for completely different reasons than I enjoyed OpenBSD. OpenBSD's focus on security and you know, it's just overall simplicity and conciseness of documentation. Everything is really what it draws me to OpenBSD. I'm really liking Debian here just because the stability is kind of the same as OpenBSD. Like if something works for you on OpenBSD, it's not just going to break, you know, like especially if you're running the stable release of OpenBSD, that being said, OpenBSD's focus on security is really nice, but also I kind of want my system to be really performant, and it definitely is much, much more performant here on Debian compared to OpenBSD. Also, I can do nice things like, I don't know, have my fans work off the dedicated headers instead of having to run them uh, off of a weird splitter and off of a Molex cable cable. So like, that's nice. And also I can do like cool things with OBS because OBS is here. So to kind of show that I did actually pull out my green screen. Um, if I, I think I can switch in OBS. Ooh. So yeah, you can see like, I just whipped out the green screen from the garage and put it up in here and I can't switch scenes and, you know, have a cool, um, uh, nice, like, you know, green screen with OpenBSD and my streaming script and recording script. I just can't do that. And OBS on OpenBSD is not really all there yet anyway so i don't know as as a content creator i definitely have more options on linux obviously software wise so that's a plus and then debian has made just using linux much more appealing here recently just everything works it comes super minimal it's hard as shit to break. Um, it's kind of like Arch in the way of it's got a massive community behind it. And there's not nearly as concise documentation on it, but there's a wealth of documentation and guides for everything under the sun on Debian. So it's just overall a really great system. I, I, I really do enjoy using Debian which is odd. I, I honestly, with as much as I switch, I expected to be off of Debian by now, but I'm not. And I'm actually planning on staying, which is weird because typically about this time I'm looking for, you know, to scratch that itch of trying something new and Debian's keeping me here. I just know my shit's going to work. Um, it's easy to, you know, customize things. I don't feel like I'm doing something, you know, that I'm not intended to be doing, which I'm not saying is something that I deal with all the time, but it's just, it, I don't know. It feels good here on Debian. I'm really enjoying myself. I'm really enjoying using the system and I'm just having fun using my computer. I, and I think that's something that's important, you know, with, and kind of a plus with any OS, if, you're, if your OS or distro is just fun not to just use for your daily tasks, but also fun and enjoyable to tinker with, and you don't really have to worry when you do tinker with stuff with breaking anything or not being able to just, you know, have it work when you do it, there's something to be said for that. It's really nice. It's, 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 it's good. It's good. So, yeah. This is this is me here on Debian enjoying it. I'm I'm really surprised at how easy it was to get a kernel installed. Um, I'll go ahead and link to the video that I watched. I'll I'll put that down in the description that showed just an easy way of using backports to get 
you know, a more up-to-date kernel. It's a fantastic video. Um, I had never seen the guy's channel before. I don't, I don't really know if he's, you know, still doing his channel or if he's a big or small creator. Not really sure, but I'll link down to his his video down below that helped me. And uh, yeah, if you if you want to get a newer kernel and you're running Debian, it's definitely a super easy way of going about things. The backports way is definitely the easiest way of doing it you might get extra bits that you don't necessarily want, but you probably do want them. At least in my case, I did. So I don't know. Maybe you'll find that helpful. And I just want to go ahead and say thank you to all the fantastic people who support me over on Patreon. All of their names are up on the screen right now. These people support the channel financially, and it means an absolute crap load to me. It, 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 it's incredible. Thank you guys. And thank everyone here on the channel for liking, subscribing, commenting with, you know, your opinions or feedback, what I could do better, you know, all that stuff. Thank you guys very much. It does, it does mean a lot and definitely helps out. And, you know, just, it's just nice. Thank you guys. So if you got anything to say, if there's anything I could have done better, if you prefer the way that the webcam was before instead of the green screen, let me know. And yeah, I think that's going to be about it for this video. Hope you have a fantastic day. Take care. Bye-bye.